leads it 12 to 9. Here in the fourth quarter, under 13 minutes to play. Kelly, he just slams into the middle. That means he slams into Chuck Price. Rhode Island has uh, had somewhat of a better ground attack here in the second half. They had only nine yards rushing in the first half on 10 attempts. Delaware, one of the uh, national leaders in rushing defense, averaging uh, under 90 yards a game. Just a yard pickup. It's a long yard at that. We'll call it second down and eight at the 27 to 28 yard line. Kelly again. Kelly, Kelly. This time he gets a little bit more room to the 23 yard line. Again, Dickinson, Bryce, and 16, Jim Polofsky was also there for the hen. More beef coming in for Rhode Island. Steve Morris, the tight end, 6'7", 240. Third down and three. Adams to the far side. New Brock single coverage against him. Harris to the near side. As a single cover on Damon Riley. Winky rolling. Fletcher throwing it. Is it caught? Out of bounds. Out of bounds. That's the official. And Riley can't believe it. Riley had gotten behind Harris. Harris expecting Riley to just go to the sideline. He congratulates Harris for that coverage. So we'll see it again. Winky rolling. He wanted to hit Riley real quick. And then the throw. And let's check the feet. He's got the football. Out of bounds. Accurate call by the official. And Rhode Island goes for it here on fourth down. And needing three. At the 22 and a half yard line of Delaware. Winky back, Busher, the pass, and not able to bring it in as Adam. Delaware, again, towards Rhode Island. Jimmy Newcock on the coverage against the diminutive Jim Adams, the senior from Providence, 5'9", 175 pounder. And the Blue Hen defense, Mike Harris, four. Jimmy Newcock, Delaware's defense to the sideline. The offense is on the field. D.J. Webster, first and 10 at the 22-yard line. Clock is stopped. Still a lot of time to play. 11.25 remaining. Higher. Behind Chakotis. And boy, he uses Chakotis that time out over the 30-yard line. He just put his hand on the back of Paul and said, Paul, take me that away. Chris Higher with the run. And some good upfield blocking. We'll take another look at it here. McKee and Chakotis, and then Hire just says, give me a couple of more yards, Paul. Out over the 30. Second down and two. Let's see if Webster would chance a pass here. No, he's going to keep it on the ground and give it to Reeder, and Reeder is going to pack his way for a missed early yardage. Out close to the 40. That's a first down pickup. Reeder uh, getting his body turned around, and then he just kept those feet a pumping and chucked forward for additional yardage to the 39 yard line Sager in Pontiac is out at tight end for the hen Nowhere yeah. has defeated Rhode Island rather handedly in their last three meetings in 81 35 to 15 and 79 34 to 14 and in 78 37 to nothing it's a struggle here today. We expected it to be a struggle, and it has been. Here is Webster under pressure. Down he goes. The pressure was there, and down went Webster. He got away from one man, but could not get away from a second. That is Poland, who is a new nose guard, Tim Poland. Just a sophomore from Riverside, Rhode Island, and he wraps up. Webster back here at the 27-yard line. Loss of 11 on the play. Second down. And 21. Higher now setting up to the far side. 
and he's going to take the pass and just squirm for another foot or so out to the 34-yard line. Buster on the quick pop. DJ was 50% throwing the football in the first half for 95 yards. Barry Enzo checking in. The Ram defense has been tough. We expected it to be tough. Delaware only crossing the goal line once. Gassed it out at the extra point. Rhode Island came back to make it 7-6. to six. Third down and 15 for Webster. Has time and out. Start down. And again, it's Poland. Hackney just not able to sustain the block on him long enough. Not uh, faulting McKee whatsoever because the defensive secondary had done the job and Webster is sitting back there. And Poland just slipping by uh, McKee who really doesn't see him as you can see there and he's got Webster pinned down at the 25 and Anderson will come on to punt it driving kick this time for Anderson and Hill is backing up at his 25 Riley knocks him off his feet Sean Riley knocking him off his feet as Hill beats the first wave down. And Sean Riley has to trip him up at the 36-yard line. Tony Hill with pass interception number nine earlier. Here he's backtracking. He's got a rather unusual style of catching the football for a turn man over his head like that. But here comes Riley, and he trips him. Had he not, uh, John Fritz was moving in quickly. First and 10 at the 37-yard line for Rhode Island. They lead it at 12 to 9, 8.08, remaining to be played. Here's the fullback, and it is Casey. And he just uh, stutter steps his way for about close to five yards. Steve Casey, uh, everything jammed up initially at the line of scrimmage, but he wouldn't quit. And, five, and he has got five. It'll be second down and five at the 42. Delaware's defense here in the second half has spent a good portion of the contest on the field. They may be getting a little weary. Again, Casey, this time not nearly as successful. Bryce holds his ground. And Vaughn Dickinson also there on the tackle. Casey just for about a yard or so. Another third down play coming up. This, of course, will be a big one because Delaware needs to get the football back. Time is starting to become very important. Riley splits to the near side. Adams to the far side. Single coverage on both of them. Winky is back. Now Riley's got him wrapped up and down. The 32-yard line. Riley beating off the block of tight end Steve Morris to make the defensive play. And Delaware will get the football back. Sean Riley, ECAC honors for his performance last week. He may warrant those honors again. Morris can't hold him. And then Winky sets right into his line of vision. And down he goes. Fourth down, Campbell standing inside of his own 40. Cassidy, oh, very shabby kick by Cassidy. And now it's going to take a Cassidy and Rhode Island roll. Hits at the 47 or so and then rolls 10 yards. So Cassidy benefiting by the roll. That certainly helps his average. That kick not uh, gotten into very well by Mike Cassidy. And B.J. Webster comes on for Delaware as the shadows really begin to lengthen. Well, we're into that time of the year when the sun, when it goes down, it goes down in a hurry. Delaware needing to score now in a hurry. First and 10 for their own 36-yard line. Fire needs a block of the corner. He's got a good block, and he dives forward out here to the 42-yard line. Danny Reeder threw that block on the corner for him. He just wiped out Guy Carbone. Carbone back in in the Rhode Island uh, secondary. That time he had set up on the line of scrimmage, and Hire just determined to pick up extra yardage, goes forward, and is knocked off his feet by Rocky Brommel, number 42. Picks up six on the play. Second down and four. Darienzo into the contest, flips into the near side. Out of our view. Webster back, throws it for Hire. Chris Hire, the junior, half back from Rock 
Mr. New York probably has some uh, family here viewing the action. And then he just steps nicely down the sideline. And finally, they hem him in and knock him off his feet. Mark Jennings, Rocky Brommel, Heyer getting a breather now. And Ron James is into the Delaware offense, first and 10 at the 19-yard line. Slagle, they're lucky for Slagle. They just completely shut down the corner. Mark Rockwell, Carbone, they're all looking for that play. And Slagle gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that is all. Barry Enzo is in now, and Hammond will come out at the spread receiver spot. Under five minutes remaining, Rhode Island clinging to a three-point advantage at 12 to 9. Webster floats it. And Hill way out of bounds. Gary Enzo, or Jones, James, Ron James, uh, in the end zone, <laughs> Delaware, but Webster having that one just slip out of his grasp and way out of bounds for Hill. Hill would like to get number 10 here for Rhode Island. You can bet already with nine on the season. Nine pass interceptions, third down and 10. Hammond to the near side. That's Slagle, and now Webster wants to call a timeout, and this will be the second timeout that the hands have used here, so they'll have only one left. The finest in Oriental cuisine is what you can always expect at both Wingwall Restaurant locations, 3901 Concord Pike and the Chestnut Hill Plaza in Newark. Succulent Cantonese dishes such as Seven Stars Around the Moon or Sweet and Sour Pork are a specialty at Wingwa where they feature combination family dinners and exotic cocktails. The entire menu is available for takeout service and they have complete facilities for parties, receptions, or group luncheons. Experience the Orient at the House of Wingwa Oriental Restaurant. In today's world, old values are still important. Values like hard work, dedication and attention to detail, a belief that results are important, that people deserve service and reliability. B. Gary Scott Realtors believe in doing things right. Try it. B. Gary Scott, your key to a better tomorrow. It has developed into a defensive struggle, as you can see by the score. Rhode Island 12, Delaware 9, Rhode Island scoring on a fake field goal attempt that everybody in the ballpark knew was coming. Tubby Raymond included, and Tubby was telling his defensive people to look out for it. But Tony DiMaggio hit Brian Forster on the near sideline, right in the corner of the end zone, for the six points just before halftime. Third down, 10. Fire in motion. Webster throwing it for Hire, and it's almost intercepted. Almost picking it off as Hire dives back over the shoulders of Randy Rocha. Number 28, number 28, going for the football. And now Delaware, here's the tail end of the play, and Rocha's got the position, and Hire's got to try to get back over him, and the ball just falls harmlessly. To the ground, John Johnson trying a 36-yard field goal attempt. He missed earlier in the third quarter. The spot, it is going to be short, I believe. It is short and off to the right. And Rhode Island, as John Gaston comes off to the sideline, Delaware going for the tie. And now it will be up to the Delaware defense to hold Rhode Island. Gaston was, well, he actually had the length, but he did not have the angle. It was an angle from right to left, and the ball floated off to the right side. That's twice that he's been off to the right side. Rhode Island, slightly favored, by the way, coming into this contest because of a home field advantage. 
and they lead it slightly at 12 to 9. But Winky is going to put it up, and he's going to whistle it to a wide open receiver, Adams. This is Rhode Island leading here and just throwing every caution to the wind, that's for sure. 4-13 left to play, and Winky drills the football. Of course, uh, Rhode Island uh, thinking that Delaware's going to be looking for Rhode Island to just sit on the football, and Winky on first down from the 20. He whistles it. Adams takes the reception. First down at the 33-yard line. Long count, and Casey of Delaware is trying to strip the football from him. Casey to the 38, Vaughn Dickinson trying to unloosen that pigskin. 3.35 and the clock is running against Delaware. Four yards on the pickup. Almost five, second down and six. As the home fans start to whoop it up. This is Kelly. Well, he's not got a whole lot to the 40-yard line. But the clock continuing to run, remember. And third down and a short four. Upcoming for Rhode Island. Rhode Island, the last Yankee Conference team to defeat Delaware, 1967, the year Delaware since then has won 31 streaks over Yankon competition. But that streak could come to an end here. Certainly is threatened. Here is Casey. First down. And that is going to just about do it for Delaware's hope of keeping that streak alive. Casey with the first down pickup to the 45 yard line. First down and 10. Clock shows 2.33. He did step out of bounds. That did stop the clock for Delaware. Remember, the Hens only have one timeout left. Adams far side, Riley to the near side. That's Kelly setting up now as a wing back. Let's look at Casey goes to the far side. Now he's going to go straight ahead, and he's going to have amazing yardage, and he's breaking it free. Steve Casey with a long jaunt to the 33-yard line of Delaware. Just a little crevice. Robertson can't hold on. And then Casey is off to the races. Polosky brings him down at the 33-yard line of Delaware. Rhode Island looking for a clinching score. But the clock is the most important thing right now. It shows only 2.06 and running. Casey again. This time stopped at the 30-yard line. Number 19, Quig on the tackle. Real Quig on the tackle, but the clock Final runs. Final score, Boston University 17, Connecticut 7. Final score, Penn State 38, Brown 14. Final score, New Hampshire 20, Maine 7. Second down and seven. Clock running out on Delaware's victory string against Yankee Conference competition. Kelly knocked off his feet. Right. Makes the tackle. But all the Rams want to do right now is just chew up the clock. And they have chewed it all the way to 116. Delaware's going to have to utilize that last time out very shortly. It's third down and three and a first down here for Rhode Island. And forget it. Under one minute. Casey into a stone wall, and he'll be stopped short of a first down as Delaware continues to let the clock run. And now the Blue Ends finally do call a timeout with only 39 seconds left to play. In today's world, old values are still important. Values like hard work, 
dedication and attention to detail, a belief that results are important, that people deserve service and reliability. B. Gary Scott Realtors believe in doing things right. Try us. B. Gary Scott, your key to a better tomorrow. How do you really know when you're overweight? When you step on the scale, and the scale steps back. When your zipper has finally lost its zip. When trying to go up really gets you down. You can lose that extra weight and still enjoy balanced, filling meals with Nutrisystem from Weight Loss Medical Center. No calorie counting, no difficult food decisions. Nutrisystem is a pre-measured, pre-packaged, and medically supervised eating program. Call now for a free consultation. Weight Loss Medical Center. When my small business grew, I talked to the people at Entree Computer Center. At Entree, they took the time to find out what my business needs were. They introduced me to affordable, reliable computer systems, and they even offered classes, installation, and continued service after the sale. Because the Entree franchise of Wilmington is privately owned, I received professional, personalized service from people who understood my business needs. There's our count on the Bank of Delaware scoreboard. Rhode Island, 12. Delaware, 9. In 1967, I happened to be there when Larry Caswell, the quarterback for Rhode Island, led the Rams to their victory over Delaware. Ted Kemsky and Chubby Raymond, they were there as well. But that's the last time... The Yankee Conference team has defeated Delaware, and Caswell, by the way, is a member of the current coaching staff under head coach Bob Griffin. Fourth down and one for it. Fourth down and one. Delaware needing to shut them down right here. touchdown of the day and that will put it out of reach for the hands of this time. Greenfellow adds the extra point and Rhode Island has up this count over Delaware at 19 to 9. Forster on the touchdown reception. He had the earlier score and it was a, a semi similar situation. Delaware on that occasion was looking for a field goal try, or at least some of them were. But here's Winky rolling out. Mike Harris is coming up quick, thinking Winky's going to run with the football. And as he comes into the picture, Ryan Forster is cleared behind him. And Forster went in for the touchdown. That gives Rhode Island its first win over Delaware since 1967. The two teams will now be even as far as wins and losses against each other are concerned. At three and three, and Delaware will drop to a four and five record, and their winning season consecutive streak definitely in jeopardy now. Steve Schelling with the kickoff return out here to the 33-yard line. But a big victory for Rhode Island. As they are now assured of uh, better than a 500 season. They were 5 and 3 coming in. They are now 5 and 4. As we have uh, Rhode Island now asked for a timeout. They've got a little confusion as B.J. Webster comes to the sideline. Timeout, Rhode Island. Rhode Island will now be 6 and 3, and they'll play Connecticut here in Kingston next weekend. Delaware 
They'll be home, and they'll have uh, a formidable task in front of them as Holy Cross, barring a major upset this weekend uh, versus Harvard, will come in with an unbeaten record of 9-0. Only 28 seconds remaining to be played. Webster throws it. Allen's got it. And doesn't even get out of bounds. <laughs> well, that's uh, just the icing on the cake, I guess. Delaware, of course, needed the clock to be stopped. It is stopped momentarily while the chains are moved. Now, Hammond gotten out of bounds. Now he's stutter stepping around. It would have stopped the... Uh, and giving Delaware more time. Here's Webster. He just floats it out of bounds. Paul Hammond, the only uh, consolation for him is today he did go over the 1,000-yard mark as a receiver for the Blue Hens, and there are only five such individuals. At the 50-yard line, Slagle, he does get out of bounds. Rolled up here on the near sideline. Long bus trip back to Newark, Delaware from Kingston for the Hens. Using his head to get out of bounds and stop the clock to end. Trail by 10, of course. The uh, final decision is uh, all wrapped up as far as the final count. We don't know how to keep him down at the 10-yard line. No one has hit him. And the clock has run out on the University of Delaware consecutive win streak against Yankee Conference competition. 31 games in a row. In fact, uh, Bob Griffin and his staff used that statistic, used that consecutive game winning streak for Delaware in prepping the Rams for this contest this weekend. They posted a paper on the wall that listed each and every game that Delaware had defeated Yankees Conference competition since back in 1967. So, last team to defeat Delaware in the Yankee Conference play as a Yankee Conference team was Rhode Island. And they do it again for Spectre Vision, the executive producer, Joe Tuckage. Until next Saturday when Holy Cross comes to Delaware Stadium, this is Len Holmquist for the Spectre Vision crew bidding you a farewell. As far as the University of Delaware, they're four and five on the downside. They need a win today and next week to ensure a winning season. They haven't had a losing season in the last 15 years. Delaware playing for respect. Holy Cross wants to go to the playoffs. It should be a good game. And we'll have the first ever meeting between Delaware's Blue Hens and the Crusaders of Holy Cross College. The opening kickoff when we return. Super E Plus, a new symbol for excellence in energy efficient homes. For years, home buyers have needed a program that certifies energy saving construction. So Delmarva Power, with the help of builders and architects, has developed Super E Plus. The result? Year round living comfort high resale value, and money-saving efficiency. To find out more, contact your Delmarva Power District office and discover the benefits of Super E+. Plus. Whether you're a world-class skier or in competition with yourself, you need a boot that puts you in control. Flexon by Reichley. Its unique rib design flexes naturally. You'll notice an overall improvement in your skiing, smoother, more powerful control, and day-long comfort. Natural Flex is the difference. Now available in two convenient rear entry models, the RX-7 with cable retention and the RX Air. Reichley, the Swiss art in ski boots. Come see the Italian Giants at Buck Cycle Shop, the high-performance 900 SEI Benelli, perfectly balanced six-cylinder machine. The Laverta 1000 RGS has changed the form of sporting bikes. The refined elegance of the Italian style, lightweight frame, and 1,000 cc of power. We're authorized dealers of Triumph, Full Taco, Moto Guzzi, Laverta, and Mangisa. Also, we're authorized dealers of the Weed Hopper, the ultralight airplane. See them all at Buck Cycle Shop, 2701 Northeast Boulevard in Wilmington. Call 764-2876.
Hello and welcome to H.A. Winston's. At H.A. Winston's you can enjoy a variety of warm and comfortable atmospheres, whether for dinner or for cocktail. The menu features our world-famous onion soup, fresh salad. Don't forget the free salad card. And Italian specialties, fresh seafood, and fine chicken delicacies. Top off your meal with one of our homemade desserts. The friendly and courteous service invites you to relax and enjoy yourself at H.A. Winston's. 100 Elkton Road in historic Granary Station, Newark, Delaware. Won't you join us? opens at quarterback. The halfback will be John Kaysan. Number two is in there. He was very, very doubtful. Chris Heyer is the other halfback, and Dan Rader is the fullback. Webster, Heyer, 25, Heyer to the 30-yard line. Chris Heyer has Delaware passing the football on first down, and I know many Delaware Blue Hens fans are. That's going to make them very the, the Delaware fans are probably going to be looking for the Blue Hens to be a little innovative this afternoon and maybe try to get away from tendencies. Quick pop of better than eight on the play on first down. It's second down and one from their own 31-yard line. As Tim Sager now sets up tight left, and Kaysan is in the slot left. Reader bounces off one man but cannot avoid the second and third. The first hit was made on him by Dave Detmer. Detmer is the right defensive tackle, a senior from Glen Ellen, Illinois. 6'3", 235-pounder. And Raider stops in his tracks. It'll be third down and one. Holy Cross with good size and exceptional quickness up front on defense. Raider, he'll be close. Well, he's got to get out between the 32 and the 33, and I don't think he's got it. Don Zielinski, right side linebacker, number 56, made the stop on Reeder, and Delaware is going to send in Mike Anderson to punt. He will be punting into the wind. Remember, it is a crosswind. Bill Boyle, single safety, inside his own 40-yard line for Holy Cross. It hits at the 48, and Delaware is going to cover it, and Holy Cross will have excellent field position for their first offensive sortie. Let's set the offense for Holy Cross in the backfield. Number 14, quarterback Peter Muldoon from Bowie, Maryland. The tailback will be Sandy McMurtry, number 34. The fullback will be number 36, Chuck Doyle. And the flanker will be number 85, Gary Quinlan from Saugus, Massachusetts. Quinlan is flanked to the far side. This is Doyle. Not a whole lot as Delaware swarms. Greg Robertson, the captain of the Blue Hens. Quickly on Doyle, who is averaging better than five yards a carry coming into the contest. And he's a young fellow that defensive coordinator Ed Maley is very, very frightened of. Now, Holy Cross will be operating without the services of their number one ball carrier, 1,000-yard rusher Gil Finnerty, injured against Harvard a week ago. He will not see service. This is Quinlan in motion. at the 26-yard line, 36-yard line, as Delaware pushes him back. Cowley is a senior from Englishtown, New Jersey, lanky at 6'3", 190 pounds. Mike Harris up from his cornerback position to make the stop that time, but not until the damage had been done. At the 35-yard line, first and 10 for Holy Cross. They come in here as the ninth-ranked scoring team in one double-A play. 30 points of all game. McMurtry picking his way very nicely over his own right side, getting up front blocking from right guard Kevin Garvey. And right tackle Bruce Kersky. And McMurtry for six. 
inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Second down and four. Here is Cowley coming to the near side. Quinlan is out there with him. quarterback. Well, Muldoon did a good job that time. He had the Delaware uh, backfield frozen looking for the pass and then he had a little bit of room and he took it and picked up the first down. Greg Robertson almost has him right there. At the 17 yard line first down for Holy Cross driving against Delaware McMurtry just stutter stepping his way to the 16 yard line. Sean Jimmy Riley. Pulaski and Sean Riley collaborate for the stop. Two yard pick up to the 16 from the 18. It'll be second down and eight. Unbeaten Holy Cross. They were tied last week by Harvard at 10 10. Delaware losing on the road to Rhode Island a week ago, 19 9. They won two weeks ago on the road against James Madison University in a thrilling comeback effort. Four and five, the Hens record. All Dune, just a little bit. In front of the center receiver Cowley slipping down inside the 10 yard line and he'll come back. There's to that the huddle. soggy turf coming into play there. I think on a dry field that might have been a completion. Baldoon, number 14, Junior, 6'2, 185 pounder, over 1,100 yards in the air this season. And the big thing that he's done from a year ago playing as a sophomore is he's cut down on his interceptions. He had about 16 a year ago. This year he's only thrown six. He's also thrown for six scores. Third down and eight. All due. That's what you call waiting, waiting until the last possible second to get the pass off. And the Holy Cross followers who have tricked down from Worcester in Massachusetts, whooping it up. Take another look. I think it's Greg Robertson that almost has it. He just waits to the last second, then he found some. He found Cowley wide open. He walks in. Six nothing, and Tony Malink. Be on to try to make it seven for Holy Cross. He was hitting him perfectly in practice. He hit this one clearly between the upright. And it is Holy Cross. Seven. Delaware, nothing. So Holy Cross's decision to take the win and give Delaware the football works here at the outset, Howard, as Holy Cross on their first offensive series takes it in for a score. That was a very methodical drive, too. I think Muldoon or whoever was calling the plays had them mixed up nicely. Uh, good ratio of running and passing, and no mistakes except for the one, the one ball that Muldoon threw that was a little bit low and behind the intended receiver. Seven to nothing, Holy Cross over Delaware. First quarter action. We have played less than four and a half minutes. And Holy Cross following the dying Delaware punch, starting at the Delaware 48-yard line. They drive 48 yards for the score. The pass combination, Peter Muldoon to Bill Kelly for the touchdown. And Tony Malik, who played for Jerry Faust at Bowler High School. Jerry Faust, of course, now the head football coach at Notre Dame. Malink kicks it, and this time it's Flago at the seven. And into a mat, and rides forward close to the 24-yard line. Oh, well, Delaware is going to start just about the same place they started their first drive. John Vesprani, number 23, reserve defensive back. One of the primary factors on the kickoff return. Now we're trailing here at 7 0. BJ Webster brings them up. Case on in motion. Reader. 
And Reeder finds room on the left side out to the 32-yard line. Danny Reeder, Delaware's leading rusher with better than 680 yards on the season. He got a nice block that time from Tim Sager. Number 77 is Gary Johansson. He leads the hands up over the football. It's second down and one out over the 32-yard line. Higher. Waits for traffic to clear, but they jam things up very nicely. The quarterback, 21, Jimmy Boyle, closed things down in a hurry, and Higher had to turn it back in, and there were too many crusaders waiting for him. He'll be short of a first down. He'll still need, and Delaware will still need, a long one. As Tubby Raymond is shuttling in spread receivers, Hammond is now back in, Paul Hammond, and Guy Darienzo had been in on the previous play. He now checks out. Higher. First down. With Higher on a nifty cutback run to the 36-yard line. Higher's a very, very valuable member of that offensive backfield, Howard. You're absolutely right, Lennon. I think he would have, uh, again, I, I hate to keep overstating the obvious. Let's take a look at this play here. It's just a straightforward, uh, nothing fancy. The last play uh, called for him to have to make a cut to his right end. As he tried to make that cut, you could see his foot slip. And, and he, it delayed him just that half a second or so. It gave the Holy Cross defense time to recover and make and the stop. On that time, he followed the block of left guard Doug Barton. First and 10, Delaware, out over the 35-yard line. Kaysan with the reception. Bumped here by Boyle at the 44-yard line. Bill Boyle on the coverage. Jim Boyle on the coverage for Holy Cross. Delaware needing still a couple as Webster. Almost gets sacked. Almost gets sacked. Just he must have known that man was there. I believe it was Dave Detmer. And we can uh, see why the, why the fans weren't too happy. They thought Delaware should have had the ball over the 45. It's back at the 44. Higher. Nothing. As he slips. A very soft footing. And just gets... Uh, about to the 45-yard line, Len Holmquist and Howard Gessner, as Dr. Vision brings you University of Delaware football as the Blue Hens try to even their record at 5-5 five and five and take a legitimate shot at continuing a winning season streak that goes all the way back to 1967. On the other hand, Holy Cross is looking for unbeaten, not perfection, but unbeaten. Kaysan diving, he'll be close. Well, he's got to get just about... Oh, right between the 45 and 46. That's awful close. <laughs> it's close, and I believe we're going to have a measurement. I'd be surprised if we didn't. Yeah. If he's got it, it's not by more than an inch or two. Let's take a look. As they set the chains down. Pull them tight. Oh, my. Just missed. He is very... Just missed. and look for Delaware to go for it. I believe so. Delaware trailing here at 7 and nothing, but... Give it to BJ, and BJ just fall down. Forward. <laughs> nothing fancy here. Fourth and inches. He's got it. He wedges ahead. He didn't have to get too much. Holy Cross is signaling no, but the side of the football is going to favor Delaware and give a a first down. If they give him his forward progress, there's no question about it. Let's take another look right here. Not a whole lot. B.J. almost uh, <laughs> mishandled the Almost snap. had trouble with the snap. Well, I don't believe we're replacing that, but it's a first down. It's, it's, if, it's up to the, if it's up to the 46 yard line, he's got it. And it's it's just a little over the 46. He'll have it by about the length of the ball. Well, Howard, you call it by the length of the football. Delaware has achieved a first down at the 46-yard line. First quarter action here at the Delaware Stadium. Windy and cool. And Hammond slips to the far side. Very limited action. 
action on the road the last two weeks. Fumbled the football of the first play against James Madison and had to come out with a shoulder problem and saw only one play service a week ago at Rhode Island when he carried the football, carried it nicely for about a seven-yard gain, but then had to leave the contest with that same shoulder problem. Delaware second, and they'll need about a foot or so for another first down just inside the 45-yard line of Holy Cross. Reader. And he's doing a very nice job. Looked like he was going to slip and have his knee go down, but he maintained his balance with his free arm. And yeah. Delaware has another first down. This could be a significant drive for Delaware Lennon. They can control the ball and go 76 yards and put some points on the scoreboard, they're going to get an awful lot of confidence out of it. And I think as the game progresses, that's going to help them a lot. First and 10 at the 41 of Holy Cross. And Webster has what looked like the running room closed down very quickly as the Crusaders converge on him. Heading up the defensive charge that time was Kevin Murphy and Harry Flaherty. Harry Flaherty took the sideline away from Webster and forced him to turn back up, and that's when he was stopped. Flaherty is an experienced and very mobile linebacker, number 42 from Red Bank, New Jersey. Second down and eight. Ooh. It's a good thing he ducked when he did because Tim Galloway would have sent him halfway into next week. Galloway, a senior cornerback from Columbus, Ohio. And you're probably wondering how he got away from Ohio State. Well, he started there, but then he transferred into Holy Cross. He's a senior, 6'2", 190. Look for number 17 in white for Holy Cross. Third down and seven as Webster achieves only one. On the second down play, this is Quezon in motion. Oh, what an outstanding call. What an outstanding call. Everybody in the ball yard looking for the pass. Kevin Murphy has to make the stop on him. Look at this. Well, you just know that's a pass. <laughs> And again, you know, with the, with the Holy Cross defense maybe over-pursuing, looking for the pass, there was no way they could stop and get their footing and recover. First down inside the Holy Cross 30-yard line. Case on as things close down rather quickly on him. Jim Healy, number 79, be the initial hit. Healy is the left defensive tackle. Junior at 6'3 and 240 pounds. Good size up front. Number 99 is the left defensive end, Steve Rackett, a senior from Clarence, New York, 245 on a 6'5 frame as the sun now breaks out here at Delaware Stadium. Healy is the left defensive tackle. Dave Detmer is the right defensive tackle. The right end is number 87, Dan Barad. Second down and seven. At the 27. Ooh. Sager not able to bring it in. High thrown ball by Webster. He got open though, Len. That's the key. I think they can they can put that play away, file it for future use. Webster just a little bit high. And it'll bring up a third down, but this is Delaware countercharging after Holy Cross on their first possession drove 48 yards very handsomely, scoring on a touchdown pass from Muldoon to spread receiver Bill Cowley. Third down. And Kaysad can't bring in the football. John Kaysad unable to bring it in. Had he brought it in, there was quickly coverage coming on him by Holy Cross. It would not have gotten the first down, I don't believe. Paul Hammond comes in from the bench with the play here on fourth down and seven. Hammond putting into the near side, double wing formation. Now Quezon to the near side. You still, still got to cover that ball. You, you never know what's going through the referee's mind. 
how, uh, how he saw it. He might have perceived it as a lateral. That it looked to me as if Webster did toss the ball slightly behind higher, but it is ruled as an incomplete forward pass. As the trees rustle in the background, it is a windswept Delaware Stadium. First quarter action, Delaware giving up the football now, and Holy Cross leading at 7 0 takes over. Peter Muldoon running the show at quarterback. He's a junior. Sandy McMurtry with the carry, and he is picked quickly here at the 30 yard line. Greg Robertson. Robertson and Charles Bryce, 97, also helping. Second down and seven. Just a second, Len, I was wondering they might have ruled out an incomplete pass. But look at the time Muldoon got to throw the ball here. Just literally just it's awful hard not to complete a pass when you've got that much time. Alley gets the hit from Riley. Looks like Riley knocked the ball out of his hand because he seemed to have pretty good control of it. Robertson, the captain, pops things over on the sideline after making the fumble recovery at the 44-yard line. Higher. Reader. This is Dan Reader with the pitch back from Webster, but very quickly on defense are the Crusaders. They've got a quick and experienced linebacking crew, just two of them, Harry Flaherty. Don Zelensky was the starter, but he has been replaced by number 50, Kevin Murphy. And up front, they have experience as well in that five-man defensive alignment. One yard on the pickup. It'll be second down and nine. Just as he makes his cut, the pressure was coming on him by strong safety Tom Pack, number five. And as he made his move, his feet went out from under him at the 41 yard line. Only got a yard on that play. There it is. Webster took a pretty good jolt there. Here comes Pack, right but he's around Pack and then tries to make his cut. And his feet go out from under him. Third down and seven at the 41. And whistle sound is Reeder. Breaks through the line of scrimmage. And now the call from referee Joseph Shirk. Probably be a procedure call against Delaware. That is, is exactly the call. Illegal procedure. And the five yard step off back to the 46 yard line. Delaware huddling back at their own 45-yard line. W. Raymond on the sideline. Third down and better than 11 for the hands of the Holy Cross 46-yard line. Senior wide receiver, fourth leading receiver in Delaware football history now. And Webster has a fluid on him as he throws into the wind, and Hammond's got it before he is pushed out of bounds. And the Delaware offensive line did a pretty good job of giving BJ some protection that time. First and ten for Delaware at the 27 yard line of Holy Cross. Two and a half minutes remaining here in the first quarter. Holy Cross leads it at 7 0. is down at the 27 yard line very mobile linebacker he had four interceptions a year ago that is his first of the season well, that was just a poorly underthrown ball that probably shouldn't have been thrown anyway there were three holy cross defenders around paul hammond that time 
would have taken a remarkable pass to, to get the ball to Hammond. Delaware moving the football. Here we get a look at it from another angle, something new we've added to our telecast this week. to that ball. Uh, he was easily three or four yards behind the Holy Cross player that time. Kaysan very quickly knocked off his feet, penetrating with Peter Flicker, the middle guard, number 40, the senior from Lowell Mass. And he dumps Kaysan for about a two-yard loss back to the 19-yard line. Second down, second down upcoming. Quinlan is the strength the heart, if you will, of the 5-2 defense employed by the Crusaders. Senior middle guard, 6'2", 250 from Lowell Mass. Oh. I didn't think Webster was going to get to hand the ball off that time. on now from our end zone replay. Chris Heyer trying to throw the block for him. The case on stepped around. First and goal. Heyer. He is back to the four-yard line is Chris Heyer. But you were right on that last play, Howard. <laughs> when he makes the the game the game last I got to tell you, the football. if the Holy Cross defender hadn't been going after Webster, if he would have stayed upright, he would have had that ball. Webster fed it right around him. Second down and goal for Delaware. A hand needing to capitalize on the mistake by Holy Cross. And here is movement by Holy Cross. But where are the Crusaders drawn? That is the question now. Joseph Shirk, E.J. Webster, he's signaling to the sideline what's happening. The legal procedure against Delaware. Second and goal now from the nine, and as you can see, Tubby Raymond not too happy with that decision. The illegal procedure. The ball marks back here between the eight and nine yard line. Second and goal from there. Good look at Junior quarterback B.J. Webster. Anthony Smith is the new fullback. Smith is a sophomore, 5'10", 195 pounder. His tubby paces the sideline. Smith joins the Delaware huddle. All placed down now at the six yard line. The clock inside the 30-second mark here in the first quarter with Holy Cross leading, but Delaware threatening. Looking for Steve Paniakos that time and just a little bit too far out in front of him. Paniakos, Delaware's leading touchdown maker with five scoring receptions, but they all came in the first three ball games of the season. Delaware's gonna go for three points here. Mike Lane will do the holding. John Gasson, who missed two field goal tries at Rhode Island a week ago, kicking into a crosswind here. Here's a pick as Delaware tries to cross up Holy Cross. Dan Reader is stopped inside the five yard line. And Delaware has 
Danny Reader trot off after being stopped. Jetmer makes very alert play by the defensive unit of Holy Cross. Look at the Holy Cross sideline. The defensive unit getting a well-deserved rest. Now it's up for their offense to hold on to the football. They've given it to Delaware the last two times they've had it. This is Doyle with nothing. Stopped in his tracks. Jimmy Newfrock and company as we have reached the end of the first quarter here at Delaware Stadium with Holy Cross on their first offensive series traveling 48 yards after a short Delaware punt. We go in front of the Delaware Blue Hens. The touchdown made by Bill Kelly on a reception from the quarterback Peter Baldoon. Holy Cross 7, Delaware nothing will be back. See the Italian Stallions at Buck Cycle Shop, the high-performance 900 SEI Benelli, perfectly balanced, six-cylinder machine. The Laverta 1000 RGS has changed the form of sporting bikes. The refined elegance of the Italian style, lightweight frame, and 1000 cc of power. We're authorized dealers of Triumph, Full Taco, Moto Guzzi, Laverta, and Montiza. Also, we're authorized dealers of the Weed Hopper, the ultralight airplane. See them all at Buck Cycle Shop, 2701 Northeast Boulevard in Wilmington. Call 764-2876. The finest in oriental cuisine is what you can always expect at both Wingwar Restaurant locations, 3901 Concord Pike and the Chestnut Hill Plaza, Newark. Succulent Cantonese dishes such as Seven Stars Around the Moon or Sweet and Sour Pork are a specialty at Wingwar where they feature combination family dinners and exotic cocktails. The entire menu is available for takeout service and they have complete facilities for parties, receptions, or group luncheons. Experience the Orient at the House of Wingwar Oriental Restaurant. We'll be back again tonight at 10 with all the latest news, weather, and sports. When First State News 530 edition goes off, the First State News team doesn't lock up and go home. On the contrary, they're back out on the street finding the latest news for First State News at 10. Fresh news, factual, informative, complete. The kind of news you expect and the kind we're dedicated to providing no matter when it happens. Take a look at today's PA High Tech Radio from BF Triple. They're the tough American, high-performance radial tires born of high technology. And we've got them all. I'm Jim Baxter, your BF Triple distributor, and we're really proud of our star performers. The sophisticated Advantage PA, the sporty radial PA, the rugged radial all-terrain PA, or any of our complete BF Triple lineup. No matter what, how, or even where you drive, you'll find the best in product, prices and services right here at Delaware Tire Center. We're located directly across from the University of Delaware Stadium on South College Avenue in Newark. And here's just some of the ways we save you money. You see, we don't charge you for the services you need when you buy new tires. Mounting, new valve stems, rotation services, and even computer spin balancing are absolutely free with your tire purchase. So check the bottom line. First quality tires, low prices, free services. Your best buys are at Delaware Tire Center in Newark. Let Hall's Quest and Howard Kester at Delaware Stadium. Second quarter action just underway on a second down and 10 for Holy Cross from their own five yard line. Fullback Chuck Doyle, number 36, carries the football out to close to the 10 yard line. It'll be third down and five upcoming for the Crusaders from Worcester, Massachusetts. All do knocked out of bounds. He'll be very close to a first down as he is knocked into the mud here on the sideline, just short of the 15 yard line. Well, that's awful close. <laughs> His foot went out right in front of that marker that they laid down there on the field itself. Fourth down as Muldoon comes to the sideline. Delaware's defense keeping him just short of the first down stick. And Pat McCarthy, a sophomore reserve quarterback. Look up in the punt. McCarthy is averaging 39 yards per punt. Joe Campbell standing back in midfield to return it. 
Campbell at the 46. Campbell into Holy Cross territory at the 47-yard line, making the stop on him. It's Kevin Murphy, listed as a reserve linebacker, but he is now in the ball game, having to play it Don Zelensky. I believe Zelensky may have been injured early in this contest. First and ten for Delaware. The Hens have driven the football, but they have come up empty so far on the scoreboard. Kaysan. Down he goes, not getting the effective block of the quarter that he needed. Doing a good job of turning it in for Holy Cross was Jimmy Boyle, the right cornerback, a junior from Lincolnwood in Illinois. And Kaysan is down. Harry Flaherty was also in on that stop. Harry, Fla Harry Flaherty is going to be in on an awful lot of stops, Howard. He is a very mobile and well-respected and disciplined linebacker. They think an awful lot of him. They, they're booming him and uh, several others for um, postseason honors. Say his name three times fast. <laughs> Harry Flaherty, senior from Red Bank, New Jersey. As the hands head on, John Kaysan gets attended to. Just a yard pickup, and he went down hard. And the shoulder problem that kept him out of action the last two weeks. It's only one play in both the win at James Madison and the loss at Rhode Island. Second down and nine at the 47-yard line of Holy Cross. Reader, and he is met straight up on a fine one-on-one -on -one individual effort for the Crusaders. That time, Tim Galloway, he's the other cornerback, senior from Columbus, Ohio, makes the stop on Reader. At just about the line of scrimmage, it'll be third down and nine. Happen to the far side, Tim Sager tight here on the near side. Stepping in front of the intended receiver, Hammond, putting his hand out there is Galloway. Tim Galloway knocks down the pass intended for Hammond. That's a nice defensive play, and we'll get to take another look at it right here. Just putting his hand right in front of Hammond as the ball arrived, and here comes number 17 to the sideline. Mike Anderson on to punt the football away. He'll hit it from about his own 43. And he drives it with a wind at his back, and it's going to hit, and it's going to go in for a touchback. It'll be brought out to the 20-yard line. Delaware's offense, Howard, has been able to move the football. Holy Cross has given them two turnovers, a pass that was dropped and recovered by Greg Robertson, and then John Gannon with the fumble recovery, but the hen, the same problem that has been persisting all season, stays with them. When they get the ball inside the 20-yard line, they have problems. Well, they got right down there on the doorstep the last time, but Holy Cross wouldn't let them in. First and 10. Well, the Crusaders leading here, seven to nothing. Ball, dude, Cowley is wide open. No, Cowley wide open as Muldoon fakes the pitch and then rolls to his right, and Cowley wide open, setting up on the far side, crossing over the middle, and he makes the reception. The touchdown maker has put the football here as he's tracked down. As we get another look at it from the end zone camera. And at the 35-yard line. First and 10 for Holy Cross. McMurtry. And he is tackled time. nicely. That is Joe Quigg, number 19. Delaware's leading sack attacker. That's the first we've heard from Joe Quigg this afternoon. Oh, I'm sure he's been out there and involved. Honored by the Delaware coaching staff for his fine play a week ago. Selected the defensive player of the game in the loss at Rhode Island. Counted for two sacks, three sacks, make it. Or better than 20 yards in losses. One yard loss on the first down play, second down and 11. 
Ball two to Lanzini has the pass. This is a big tight end, and he rumbles into Delaware territory to the 41 yard line. Greg Remarkable Lanzini, catch. Six foot five, 240 pound sophomore from Orange in Connecticut. Looks a little bit like a uh, guy that used to play for Westchester. Remember Joe Spencer? Look at the one hand grab. What? That's pretty impressive. Yes, it is. And then he just rumbles. As the hand flows in on him. He knows what to do with it once he gets it also. Oh, he's going to give somebody <laughs> free ride for three Delaware defenders. And a forearm to one of the blue heads. First and ten. This is Doyle, but the heads are looking for Doyle. This is the man that they were very frightened of by Greg Robertson. You know, Holy Cross kind of sneaks up on you because I just realized that they started this drive on their 20-yard line and here we are about four plays later and they're almost down to the Delaware 40. Second down at 11 as Doyle is stopped for a yard loss. Quinlan to the far side. Howley to the near side. All dude under pressure and down he goes. Under a sea of blue shirts headed up by Vaughn Dickinson. No. Vaughn Dickinson was playing elevator operator this time. I'm sure he said to Mr. Muldoon, going down. And no. Joe Quigg was there. Gannon was there. Charlie Bryce was there back at the 46-yard line. It'll be third down and 24 for Holy Cross. Five minutes into the second quarter here at Delaware Stadium. Holy Cross leading it at 7-0. Broken off nicely intended for Quinlan. Jimmy Newfrock got a bear hug on him as the ball is now retrieved by the official inside the 20-yard line. Quinlan will come to the sideline. Well, here's Muldoon again. Nice, well-thrown ball. And just a little bit overthrown. Quinlan yeah. had to go high, and Delaware could cover him. If Jimmy Pulaski had stayed on his feet that time, he might have had an interception. Pat McCarthy to put it away. Low line driver that's going to hit, and now Roll and Campbell's going to get away from it as it rolls inside the Delaware 20-yard line and will be covered at the 18-yard line, and that's where the Blue Hens will take over. Delaware's offense has moved the football. Been the same as it's been for most of the nine previous weeks. They just haven't been able to put the football in the end zone. Having right. splitting here to the near side. That's higher set up as a wing back right here. He comes in motion. Raider just a couple to the 21 yard line. Delaware is not going to uh, have a whole lot of success blowing out that tough middle. Headed up by middle guard number 40, Peter Quinlan. That's fine. Linebacker number 42, Harry Flaherty. Second down and seven. Again, Hammond to the near side. Flag down as Webster puts down under pressure. Now we'll have to check out the flag. Delaware may have been detected again for procedure. Pressure that time coming from number 83, Dave Detmer. Detmer the right is tackle. The senior. Defensive tackle on the right side, 6'3, 235 from Glenn Ellender, Illinois. The call is against Delaware, but Holy Cross might take the play here. Illegal Referee, motion. George Shirk, motion Delaware declined because Webster slipped down inside the 15-yard line, inside the 14, actually. The ball resting between the 13 and 14. The sun shining brightly here on the windswept gridiron at the University of Delaware in Newark. The season finale for the Hens next week. Buckdell travels down from Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. Dan Reeder gets the initial step, but then Flaherty comes across quickly and knocks him down, and Delaware will have to punt it away. That was a third down call. And Anderson will punt it, and he will have a win that is back. Going back 
second single safety is a fellow that I know that you're very familiar with, at least the name. Oh, yes. His brother won himself an Olympic gold medal four years ago, three years ago. This is Vin Arizioni, number 11. Just better stepping his way at midfield as the blue shirts converge on him. Vin, as a punt returner, and return 17, number 11. Had a great deal of size for Arizona. Arizona, about 5'7", 155 to 60 pounds. Good quickness, though. His brother, of course, in case anyone needs reminding, was captain of the U.S. ice hockey team that won the gold medal at the Winter Olympics in 1980. Quinlan in motion to the near side. From midfield, first and 10. Muldoon delivers behind Cowley. Cowley was open at split the seam. Muldoon delivered it just a little bit too quick. Muldoon hasn't done too much wrong here so far this afternoon. When I say delivered it too <laughs> quick, a little quick for Cowley to try to handle reaching back for the football. It actually threw it a little bit too late because Cowley had cleared. Cowley and Muldoon collaborating in the first quarter for a touchdown strike, and that's where we stand. It's 7 0 Holy Cross. They scored on their first possession. Eight and a half minutes remaining here. Still halftime. Wayne Jackson in the block to the near side. And he's going to be the intended receiver. The goal will slip down and Baldoon coming up empty again. You mentioned Jerry Faust a little bit earlier, the coach at Notre Dame. And take a look at some of those names in the Holy Cross backfield. And just from a PR point of view. You'd, you'd have to think that Jerry would be happy with that backfield. You got a McMurtry, a Doyle, a Quinlan, and a Muldoon. And you can't get any more Irish than that. That's the four-leaf clover backfield. Could be. Third down and ten from midfield for Holy Cross. Quinlan just to the top of the screen. Cowley can't bring it in this time as Mike Harris comes up. On coverage. Looks like Muldoon is having a little bad streak here because Cowley was open that time. And it's interesting uh, from midfield that uh, Holy Cross would immediately abandon their running game. Of course, Delaware is ranked fifth in the country against the rush, giving up less than 90 yards per game to the opposition by the run. McCarthy to punt it. Campbell singles fair catch looking into the brilliant son of the 20-yard line and he takes it in right there. And Delaware will take over trailing here. As the wind picks up at 7-0. The Holy Cross sideline. Head coach Rick Carter in his third year at Holy Cross, and he has done quite a job for the Crusaders. Six and five in his first campaign, eight and three a year ago. And unbeaten so far here in 83 as Reeder gets out to about the 23-yard line. Dave Nielsen, who is now at the middle guard spot, number 66, tripping him up. Nielsen is a junior, 6'1", 235-pounder. Holy Cross 7, Delaware nothing on the Bank of Delaware scoreboard here at Delaware Stadium. Eight minutes to go till halftime. Second down and seven from the 23. Higher, right down as higher goes down, and we're going to have pass interference called against Holy Cross. More specifically, Pat Ferry is hey. going to be called for the interference. Let's take a look here, and even if he doesn't touch him, he's got his hand in his face, and that's interference. Oh, he got a little contact, yes, too. Yes, he did. And the flag comes in. Can yeah, we take a look from the end zone? Well, you can't see it as well there. Well, it looked like uh, Barry was giving higher just a little bit of a shove, and it's first down on the pass interference call against Holy Cross here at the 43-yard line. Let home quest, Howard Gesner, Spectre Vision, bringing you University of Delaware football. Hammond's putting into the near side. That's Slagle now in motion. As Hire takes the inside handoff, this play worked nicely before in the first quarter, but Reader's block got stuffed, and Hire got stuffed rather quickly. 
at the 44-yard line. Reader tried to throw some throw a block for him, and he got stuffed up real quick as Flaherty came across, and so did big number 99, 6'5", 245-pound senior Steve Rackett. He's the left defensive end. Second and nine. Hyatt cannot bring it in. From from up here, uh, Wendy, when we if we see a replay on it, it'll it'll bear this out. But it looks as though the Holy Cross defender got a, got his hand on that ball. Could be wrong. No, not quite. Higher. Remember, the fingers are a little bit numb. Just a little. The sunshine is out, but the wind is whipping, and the wind chill factor has probably got well, it's probably down around uh, 20 to 25 degrees. Flagel in motion, third down and nine for the 44. And Higher can't bring it in as Webster is dumped. After getting off the screen pass, Chris Higher is having some trouble holding on to the football now, and he'll cross, he'll cross to the far side, to the sideline, and Delaware will send in Mike Anderson to punt. Pardon the use of the term, but it's both the offense on both teams seems to have gone a little bit cold here the last 10 minutes or so. Well, it's understandable. Yeah. <laughs> Anderson covering the football, and Holy Cross will have it as the football rolls back to him. Well. At the 33-yard line. Take a look from our end zone replay camera. John Fritz, who snaps on punt, and Anderson is covered quickly. Not much he could do with that one. At the 34-yard line. That's Longini setting up tight on the far side. Doyle, nothing. Delaware just snuffs everything at the 32-yard line. They are looking for the inside game. Something that Holy Cross has been able to produce. They're all winning season so far. That tie last week, 10 to 10 with Harvard, by the way, in a driving rainstorm up in Massachusetts. We weren't too far from Mass at Rhode Island, but uh, it was a beautiful day for football. The storm front of the New England area cleared our area, but Massachusetts got it, and Harvard and Holy Cross had to play in it. And Muldoon comes up and says, I want to puck things over on the sideline. And Holy Cross has asked for a timeout as Muldoon will now come over to the sideline and confer as our score as Holy Cross leading Delaware at 7 0. And you know, the way Holy Cross started out when they marched down, well, not exactly down the field, 48 yards, their first possession, but was a very methodical drive. And they put the ball right in the end zone. And to be honest with you, I thought it was going to be a long afternoon for Delaware because it looked as though the Crusaders knew what they were doing. Rick Carter is the head coach. Tommy Raymond, the Blue Hens mentor, of course. But Carter is certainly an architect when it comes to turning football programs around. Two years having graduated from Earlham College, Carter was named the head football coach there. And in six years, he brought a 2-5-1 and one team to back-to-back 6-3 -back and three records, and then he departed, went to Hanover College, had a winning record there of 27-21, and 21, and has done very well at Holy Cross in his third season. Muldoon, Halley has the reception this time. <laughs> Greg Robertson tried to leap and bat it away at the line of scrimmage, but Cowley has the well-timed reception from Muldoon. Mike Harris recovers quickly here to make the stop. Save six points. Inside the 20-yard line, at the 19-yard line, it'll be first and 10 for Holy Cross with 6.06 to go. Just over the outstretched hands of the defenders. Well-timed pass from Muldoon to Cowley. Quinlan in motion to the far side. McMurtry, and he slips inside the 15-yard line, showing Riley knocking him off balance. Well, he got five yards that time, and he got picked up four of them running backwards. Andy McMurtry, 
Jr. from Brockton, Mass. That's a well-known landmark in New England, Brockton. Any place in Massachusetts is a well-known landmark, man. Yeah, but Brockton, of course, is the home of the late and great heavyweight champion Rocky Marciano. Right. Here is a step off against Delaware. I believe the head may have jumped in the line of scrimmage. That's what it is, all sides against Delaware. The step off inside the 15 to the 14 yard line. It'll bring up a first down and five for Holy Cross. Uh, they'd love to put six more on the board here before halftime. They'd have to feel awful good in the locker room. Up 13 or 14, nothing. That's Jackson in motion to the far side. McMurtry, they try the same play, but this time the results are not as good as the hands are looking for him. Greg Robertson, and he had assistance from Vaughn Dickinson right at the line of scrimmage. Well, I guess they figured it worked well the first time, and we got a break with the penalty. Let's try it again. Well, McMurtry did one thing different this time. He ran frontward. Callie to the far side. Quinlan is flanked here to the near side. Now McMurtry in motion to the far side. Ball two, slipping it back over the middle. I don't know who he was intending for. Maybe Longini, the tight end. I think he was just intending to get away from Kenny Pawlowski. Kenny almost had him for a loss. The rush came quickly by the Blue Hand defense. They got burned on that first Holy Cross drive, but has done exceptionally well since. That's Jackson coming into the picture. Wayne Jackson, number 85. And he splits to the near side. Third down and four. Doyle, and he'll have the first down as they run with the quick hitter. Up the middle behind the blocking of left guard Fran Warren and center Larry Weaver. First down inside the nine yard line. Well, he made it with about a yard to spare, Len. Doyle is from Nashua, New Hampshire, a sophomore. And they've got another sophomore behind him from Chicago, Illinois, Mike Dooley. Chuck Doyle, 36, Mike Dooley. 35. Dooley's got to feel right at home this afternoon. Yeah, this is Chicago kind of weather. Muldoon, he is sacked, and he's fumbled the football. Delaware's got the football. Now let's, let's wait for him to unpile and make sure. I tend to agree with you, Glenn. I, I think a Delaware player is on top of it. Strange things happen in those piles, though. Here, let's take another look. Muldoon gets stood up. Greg Robertson. Greg Robertson hit him, and that's when the ball came loose, and I think it's Greg that falls on it. Robertson and Gannon were both there, and Delaware does come up with the football. At the eight-yard line, Delaware with another Holy Cross turnover. Delaware has had its problems turning the football over this year. Today, it's been Holy Cross's problem. You might say the turnover problem has been Holy Cross's cross the bear but Delaware on the short end of a seven to nothing count and just into the middle goes fullback Danny Reeder Delaware trying to pick up a little real estate right here the ball plays down at the 12 yard line second down and seven 345 to go until halftime Higher in motion. Readers just stacked. That's a very aggressive hard charging of the Delaware fans. A little bit upset with Delaware's complacency on offense here, but the hands are only trailing at seven and nothing. And you can't put the ball up in the, in this situation. You gotta you gotta get a little more real estate behind you before you start taking that chance. Ty Darienzo has brought the play in. He's at split in now to the far side. Hammond is out. Third down, still seven at the 12-yard line. Well. Oh. Not able to bring it up. 
string of the reception trying to come back for the football. But Chris Meyer at the 33-yard line, making the diving effort for it as Webster is scrambling away from trouble. Well, there was two good two good jobs turned in on that play that time, Len. The Delaware offensive line giving Webster all this time and the secondary of Holy Cross for not giving Webster anything to do with that time. Steve Rackett putting the heat on Webster. Anderson will punt it from his own end zone. And he gets off a driving punt. And Arizona is going to let roll and it's going to be downed by the Blue Hens. Paul Hammond downfield to cover at the 47-yard line with under three minutes to play here in the first half of action. Delaware trailing Holy Cross at 7 to nothing. Sunshine, but windswept and cold. And as the day goes on, you know it's going to be increasingly colder, Howard. You, know, you might say that that was an unproductive possession for Delaware, but when you stop, at least for the time being, it saved them at least three points recovering that fumble. That's Longini setting up tight on the far side. This is McMurtry, and he is into Delaware territory, has the football come loose, and they're going to roll After it down at the 49-yard line. Delaware, of course, looking for another turnover and better field position with this turnover. McMurtry on a four-yard pickup. Greg Robertson, number 56, number 99, Jeff Howdenshield. Right in the center of our camera. Second down and six at the 49 of Delaware. Howley. Oh. Getting away from Vaughn Dickinson. And moving the football inside the 45-yard line. The Blue Ends look to have a bead on Cowley, who is turning out to be a rather slippery uh, operative. <laughs> Vaughn Dickinson almost had himself a great play here. Take a look, he's checking off now. Out to Cowley. Uh, and Cowley just flipped around him before he can be corralled. It'll be third so down quick, and finally eight. made the stop. Third down and two. Doyle is stacked. That play really never got off cleanly. Delaware appearing to maybe jump on uh, defense. But they got back, and then Doyle, very slow developing play into the center. And Greg Robertson has him high, and he's got help low, and Delaware has asked for and has received a timeout with one minute and 11 seconds to go here in the first half. And the Blue Ends may want to set up a... Maybe a series of plays. Well, they don't really need that because they've still got two timeouts left, well, even after be, using this one. They may be setting up uh, to try to block this upcoming punt. You would imagine they're going to go for the for the uh, the corner, try to kick it out of bounds somewhere inside the ten. Pat McCarthy, the punter, has been to the sideline. Now he's back out and setting up at the 42-yard line. The up man blocking for him is that uh, Harry Flaherty fellow. I think Delaware's coming. Delaware with 10 men at the line of scrimmage, all within a couple of yards, and Campbell alone inside the 15-yard line. Delaware is coming, but he gets it off, but the wind's going to hold it up, and it's going to hit, and Campbell slips down, luckily for Campbell and luckily for Delaware, because he was thinking of maybe fielding that punt. He was. And and once he slipped, he had no control. If that ball would have bounced near him and touched him, no, it would have been anybody's football, but it didn't. 22 and a half yard line is where Delaware will have it with 1.02 on the clock. And the clock stopped on the change of possession. Hammond. Leading to the far side. Ooh. Webster throwing it behind the intended receiver, Tim Sager, at the 30-yard line. The footing is, well, as you can see, it is very difficult to plant. Webster drilling it, but Sager trying to... Go behind, 
unable to keep his feet and unable to bring in the ball. The ball. I don't think you'll see too many successful operations of that nature this afternoon coming back with the ball thrown behind you. Just too slippery. Higher setting up now to the far side. Gary Enzo is split out here to the near side. And this one is batted by Jim Healy. Delaware getting a major break as Holy Cross looking for that one. Watch Webster and watch Healy. Number 79, Ooh. he tipped and it. Almost intercepted. And had he not tipped it, Steve Rackett may have had a clean shot at it. With nothing but green real estate in front of him. Third down and 10 at the 22-yard line. 54 seconds remaining here in the first half. Here is a almost a flag is thrown now. Almost reception by Hammond after Flaherty. <laughs> And drop back on defense. It's against Holy Cross, I believe. And the flag was dropped 15 yards away from uh, where the ball was thrown on the far side. And it is going to go against Holy Cross. Referee Joseph Shirk. With the football, and he'll step it off against Holy Cross. Five yards. Illegal contact against Holy Cross, but only a five-yard step off. Which means it's still third down. Third and five for Delaware. This is at the 28-yard line. Webster throwing it into the ground. He had higher at the first down marker at the 33-yard line. And Webster, under the pressure, throws it into the ground, and Delaware will send on the punting team again. I think that Webster that time was throwing the ball away from Peter Quinlan, almost as much as he was trying to throw it to Chris Heyer. Anderson gets it off high, and the wind is carrying it. Here is the only falls down. Oh, and it's going to roll in. Well, I'll tell you, it really doesn't matter a whole heck of a lot. We only have 33 seconds left here in the first half, but that's a 72-yard punt, Len. Yeah, but we've seen him do better. He had 74 against Massachusetts. <laughs> you always find something to complain about. <laughs> Mike Anderson booms it. And here's little Vin Arizioni. Uh-oh. He's just lucky that that he's ball... He's just saying, stay away from me, ball. Yeah, he's lucky the ball wasn't a little bit closer when he did his uh, tripping act. And look for Holy Cross just to wind out the first quarter, first half clock here. <laughs> and they push it out over the 25 to the 27-yard uh, line. That's one of the most successful running plays they've had in the last five minutes. Not Doyle. bad for running out the clock. Yeah, that's Doyle carrying the football number 36. Doyle has seven touchdowns on the season. Finity, who is not uh, seeing service, their 1,000-yard rusher injured against Harvard a week ago as the clock is running down here in the first half. Kennedy has 14 touchdowns, but he's not here. Delaware and Holy Cross are here. They played the first half in their first ever meeting. Holy Cross leads as we go to intermission. The Crusaders scoring on their very first possession. Touchdown pass from Peter Muldoon to spread receiver Bill Cowley. Our halftime count, Holy Cross 7, Delaware nothing. Back to the second half in just a few moments. In today's world, old values are still important. Values like hard work, dedication, and attention to detail. A belief that results are important, that people deserve service and reliability. B. Gary Scott Realtors believe in doing things right. Try us. B. Gary Scott, your key to a better tomorrow. Thank you. 
If you've never seen really delicious pizza being made, watch closely. If you had called Domino's Pizza when this commercial began, this could be your pizza. The Domino's Pizza Professional begins every pizza from scratch, custom made to your order. And our free delivery could be at your door in only 30 minutes. Steaming, hot, and delicious. When you call us... Wilmington, Newcastle. Hello again, everyone. Len Holmquist and company with Howard Gesner. Ready to bring you the second half action. Delaware and Holy Cross. John Gaston. Ready to tee the football up. As Delaware will take the wind here in the third quarter. Real briefly, Len, the first half statistics are a little bit underwhelming, and we'll get to those a little bit later as we have more time. Gaston has the football now blow off the field. We have to re-spot it. Deep for Holy Cross is John Vesprani. Well, let's make that Rich Lane, number 33, a freshman. 5'11", 170-pounder. There he is, number 33. Just a 17-year-old youngster. He's standing inside the three-yard line. Gaston set to kick it for Delaware. Second half underway. Line driver is going to be taken by an up man who is going to fake a reverse and slip down as he is out to the 20-yard line. With the football is Mike Dooley, the reserve fullback, 35, coming to the sideline. Dooley from Chicago, Illinois. As you pointed out in the first half, Howard, his kind of day here at Delaware Stadium. <laughs> little windswept. Peter Muldoon comes on to run the offense for Holy Cross from just over their own 20-yard line. Third quarter just underway. Delaware and Holy Cross, first meeting ever. Holy Cross is unbeaten with one tie. Delaware trying to achieve a 500 season. And Doyle is going to carry on the first play, and he's going to have some yardage out over the 25. I mean, with a little bit of uh, recklessness is Chuck Doyle, number 36. Delaware regroups behind Captain number 56, Greg Robertson, calling the defensive signal. Seven-yard pickup on the first down play. It'll be second down and three. Jackson goes into the spread receiver, 85 to the far side. And he replaces Gary Quinlan, who's now on the sideline. Juan Genie will shift over and set up tight on the far side. And Doyle will carry it again. And this time, they're waiting, waiting for him. Well, Jeff Howden Shield and company, they stack him. Looks like Holy Cross is determined to try to run the ball, even though they only gained a net 28 yards rushing in the first half. We're going to have a chance to uh, look at the uh, official <coughs> first half statistics in uh, just a moment or so. Third down and two will be needed. As Joe Campbell is getting set to come on, should Holy Cross have to punt it away on fourth down. Bill Cowley, number three, to the far side. Doyle, and he'll be close, very close to a first down. Well, if he's over the 31, he's probably got it. See where they put the ball down. Depend on the spot now. Uh, and the chains are going to be brought in, signaled by referee Joseph Shirk. If he's got it, it's by about three inches. Well, the weather conditions, the fierce wind, Howard, certainly uh, dictates the situation here. Uh, should he not have picked it up, and he is a little no, bit didn't. short, then you've got a decision to make, and I think Holy Cross may decide Let's get rid of the football. I, I would think so. It'd be it'd be kind of foolish at this point in the game to go for it. They're only up they're only up by seven points, and Delaware has demonstrated this afternoon that they can move the ball. Pat McCarthy and his crew coming on to punt it away. Joe Campbell will return it for Delaware. Campbell inside his own 40-yard line. McCarthy punted four times. For a 32-yard average in the first half. 
The lower setting up a return. Oh. And here's a live driver that's going to be held up. Campbell's going to get away from it again. It's going to die at the 39-yard line. When that ball reached its apex, it just stopped dead in the air and came straight down. And covering it was Kevin Murphy, number 50. Now, Delaware's got some pretty decent field position here. 39-yard line. And they can, Fez. I was going to say, they can do just about anything they want. The fans trying to get the hens a little bit around. Timmy Slagle is Delaware, just takes it to Holy Cross. Power football off the right side, and they've got a quick pop for almost five. Tim Slagle. Didn't see a lot of Slagle in the uh, first half. We did see Don Kasaw, but he was bumped again in the first half. After picking up some nice yardage for the Hens, Kasaw had six carries for 20 yards. Second down and five from the 44. Webster passes, not able to hit his intended receiver, Tim Sager, the tight end. Sager back to the huddle. Delaware's best shot at a touchdown was a pass that was just off the fingertips of receiver Steve Pontiacus, and Pontiacus is now checking into the Delaware lineup as we get another look at it. Webster drills it, but unable to bring it in. And some good defensive pressure also on Sager. Third right. down and five. It's a long five for the Hens. Watching that on the replay, now it, it probably would have been a good pass that he caught it when I was watching the play on the field as it developed. It looked like he might have been out of bounds. Higher in motion to the near side. Flags are thrown as the ball is snapped. And Delaware may have used too much time. And that'll be some sort of a procedure penalty against Delaware. Referee George Shirk. Joseph Shirk. Delay of the game is the call. Delay against Delaware. 25 seconds to get off the play in college football. That puts this third down into a different perspective now. Instead of uh, third and five, you've got third and ten. Kind of takes away the option. And Pontiacus is out, and Sager is in, and he's going to set up tight here on the near side. Hammond to the far side. Slipping down, and the interception is by Galloway as Hammond slipped down, and Galloway went right over top of him for the interception for Holy Cross, the first turnover by the Blue Hens in the ball game. He's exceptionally quick. He lays back behind the intended receiver and doesn't make his move until the last possible second. He did that earlier in the second quarter. It was to watch it again from the end zone replay. Uh, where he just got his hand on the ball and knocked it away, but he lays back the defender, probably doesn't even know he's there, and then at the last second, he just comes in. Interception number two on the season for Tim Galloway, first and ten for the 48-yard line for Holy Cross, and this is McMurtry. He's got five in the Delaware territory to the 47-yard line. Sean Riley, one of those making the stop on McMurtry, but McMurtry has a tendency uh, power to get to the line rather quickly. Yes, he does. He's there in a hurry. And if there's any kind of a hole at all, he's got four or five yards. A little rem reminiscent of uh, Paul Palmer, who played for Temple and did such a big job against Delaware. Second down and five. It's Delaware 47. McMurtry. Good. One-on-one -on -one stick, but he bounces off Palowski. And Palowski looked like he had a secure shot at him. And... <laughs> Then other help came. There's no way he should have still been on his feet after Polowski hit him. I tell you, Polowski a little slow getting up after that contact with McMurtry, who goes 185 on a six-foot frame. Let's take a You'll see look why in a second here. He hits him right straight head on. Boom. He just doesn't lock the arms, and McMurtry skirts away from him. Six up four. It'll be third down and one. Here does it get on from another angle. 43-yard line. Doyle is upended, and he will not have the first down as Delaware comes across the line very quickly. That's got to be Jeff Houdenshield. That's in his neighborhood. Number 99 on the bottom of the pile. And Doyle actually losing about a half step on the play. And fourth down coming up again, and McCarthy comes on to punt for Holy Cross. I hate to sound hokey, but that is inspirational defense. That's 
to, to deny a team who, you know, the last few plays has been running virtually at will. Just not let them get that last yard. There's McCarthy clearing away a little bit of uh, turned up grass. And he's angling it for the near sideline, and it's going to hit and roll in, and Delaware will have the ball at their own 20-yard line. Delaware gets a break there. If that ball bounces the other way, it's on the one. Well, the head offense comes on. And the last man on the field is quarterback B.J. Webster. Number 11, Holy Cross sideline. Evan, near side, hires the wing back right. Third quarter action. We've played about five minutes here in the third quarter. Still 7 0 Holy Cross. Reader tripping as he goes over his own right side. Flaherty makes the stop on him. Harry Flaherty. Gain of three on the play. It'll be second down and seven. And rather belatedly, Steve Pontiacus checks into the Delaware huddle. The wind is starting to pick up a little bit here at Delaware Stadium. If it can pick up any more than it already has, Webster, he'll be close to a first down as the defense reacts belatedly, getting a shoulder into him and making the first contact for a holy cross. Tom Haskins, a reserve defensive end. Here's another look at it. And Webster decides to turn up field. And here comes Haskins. And he has help from the ever-present Mr. Flaherty. Third down, a long one for the Hens. Oh, and Webster my. unloads it. His receiver, Hammett, was covered. The booze come up, but had he thrown that football, and Holy Cross was looking for it, Howard. They sure were. Number nine covering is Bill McGovern for Holy Cross, and Anderson is in the punish for Delaware. It'll have, of course, the trailing win. the 35 and they cover quickly to the Blue Heavens here at the 38 yard line. Joe Quigg down there. Once again the Delaware defense will be called on to do the job. Oh, Arizioni, the brother of Mike Arizioni. Towers to put it out. Captain of the U.S. hockey team. He won the gold medal. First and ten for Holy Cross. On their own 38-yard line, both Cowley and Quinlan. Quinn receiver to the far side, but they run it back this way, and McMurtry spins off the first man and picks up some nice yardage. Greg Robertson took the first shot at him, but he pulled off Robertson. Remember, McMurtry is the second-line tailback for the Crusaders. Bill Maley is with us on the sideline here at Windswept Delaware Stadium. Bill, give us your reaction to what you've seen so far here in the first half and the third quarter. The first half, there uh, wasn't much unpredictable in the uh, Delaware offense. Uh, they threw the ball, ran the option a little bit. The defense played well, keeping the double threat and well dude in check. But the second half looks like it's going to be a Looks like it's going to be a game of field position with a strong win. And field position has just changed for Holy Cross into Delaware territory as tight end Greg Longini makes the reception and puts the football at the Delaware 39-yard line. Longini, a sophomore, 6'5", 240-pounder from Orange in Connecticut. Cowley and Quinlan again. Double receivers to the far side. Longini set up tight here on the near side. McMurtry into a stack, but he still manages to ride forward for a couple of yards as Charlie Bryce was trying to check McMurtry's momentum. I tell you, I look at Longini, number 90, the tight end, and I'm, I'm surprised they don't use him more. Uh, he's not even listed in the top three uh, as far as, you know, total yardage and reception for this year is. And as big as he is and what he did with that ball on that one catch he made, uh, I'd have to 
I'd have to use him a little bit more. Of course, maybe Fennerty was the reason that he didn't see the ball any more than he has. Fennerty had carried 165 times for better than 1,100 yards or 1,000 yards. McMurtry, and they stack him this time. Getting the shoe was Sean Riley, number 58. And not letting go here at the 34-yard line. Third down and four. Will be There's a big hole there, but, cross, but Riley, Riley covers it up in a hurry, and Greg Robertson comes in to help. And one more thing about Fennerty. He's also got 16 pass receptions this year. Well, they used him out of the backfield. Whether they're running the football or passing the football, but he's done neither today. He has not seen service out with a shoulder separation suffered a week ago against Harvard in the tie. Third down and five. All dudes. Throws it just a little bit too short for Cowley. A little bit of pressure from Vaughn Dickinson that time. Might have been part of the reason for... Delaware has changed its uh, defense a little bit here in the third quarter, Howard. They're asking their ends, their defensive ends, to contain a little bit more and not be blowing so quickly across the line. And that time, the containment was there, and Muldoon unloaded it, had some pressure, as you pointed out. Holy Cross has a little bit of a mix-up here. And they are asking for, are the Crusaders, a timeout on this fourth down and five as they unsure whether they wanted to punt it or go for it. And it appears now that they are going to go on fourth down and five. Well, they are, they're pretty deep in Delaware territory. They're on the 34-yard uh, line, and it's not, as, it's not as big a risk as it was when they were in their own territory and only had a couple of inches. They're probably figuring that if McCarthy doesn't hit it right anyway, they're only going to give up 14 yards That's right. on the yard line. Right. Fourth down and five could be a very big play because this is still a nip-and-cut contest, remember. Delaware trailing by only the... Single touchdown at seven to nothing. And that took place on Holy Cross's very first possession. Since then, defense has struggled. Delaware unable to capitalize on some Holy Cross turnovers. clear there was no buddy from Delaware close to him look at this uh, this is Dooley the reserve fullback makes a nice reception and he has moved the football with this reception for a first down at the Delaware 18 yard line on Genie setting up here on the near side McMurtry gets a good block here on the corner by the fullback Doyle and he puts the football down to the 15-yard line. Doyle doing a nice bit of blocking on Newfrock. Or uh, let me correct myself on Joe Quigg. Second down and seven. Jeff Houdenshield came up to make the stop that time. This is a well-disciplined football team that Rick Carter has brought in here to Delaware Stadium from Worcester, Massachusetts. Muldoon is very cool under pressure. That's Jackson in motion to the far side. Ball duty is Hampton is going to be dropped for a lot. Jackson at the 20 yard line. He wanted to run, couldn't make up his mind. Vaughn Dickinson made, got him. Yes, he made up his mind. Vaughn Dickinson decided, decided to zero in on number 14, Peter Muldoon, junior quarterback from Bowie, Maryland. Went to Archbishop Carroll High School. Take a look from the end zone replay camera. He wants to run, now he wants to pass again, now he wants to run, and... <laughs> Two defensive ends. Enough of that. Vaughn Dickinson and Gannon collaborate on him. Lost back to the 23rd, down and 11. Muldoon put it on the mark. 
start. High percentage passer who really didn't have a great first half, but he did throw for the one strike in the first quarter. And here he strikes again in the third quarter as Holy Cross goes up at 13 to nothing. Sandy McMurtry might have been very responsible for those six points. He, he threw a good block that gave Muldoon the time to throw the ball that time. And little Tony Mellick comes on with his big foot at the 14 point. As Holy Cross is exuberant as you can okay, see. We'll take another look right here. The end zone camera and Boy, that was, that was a nice away catch. from Maris. It was a fine reception by a fine receiver. Cowley in the first half of this contest had six receptions for 74 yards. His longest was the 16-yard touchdown strike. He's gone longer now, at least in TD receptions, with just under 20 yards and a 14 and upping advantage for Holy Cross over the University of Delaware. Delaware has had 15 consecutive winning seasons under head coach Harold Tubby Raymond. But that string definitely in jeopardy now. Holy Cross looking to absolutely sew up a Division I AA playoff spot on this weekend. They have an engagement coming up next weekend with Boston College. No love lost there. Yeah, that won't be any uh, picnic. Boston College enjoying one of its finest years under quarterback Doug Flutie. The link comes on the ball, and it's going to be taken by Slagle at the 20. Oh. And riding into Slagle is number 44, so it's 44. On 44, Scott Rudy, reserve linebacker. Slagle off his feet here at the 30-yard line. Delaware is trailing by two touchdowns now at 14 and nothing with 434 remaining here. Third quarter action. Let Holmquist and Howard Gesner, along with the Spectre Vision cameras at Delaware Stadium in Newark, will be here again next week when Delaware closes the 1983 season against Bucknell's Bison. A little traffic directing there by B.J. Webster. Slagle. Quickly out of bounds here at the 35-yard line. Defensive pressure, Dan Baran, number 87, giving uh, Flago the escort out of bounds. And a little bit further. <laughs> a little bit better than five on the pickup. It'll be second down and five. Well, it's time for Delaware to put another drive together like they did in the first quarter. Tyler in motion, now he sets up to the far side. We have a new quarterback, John Sparr. Flagle. And a first down by Flagle as John Sparr is now running the offense. Flag Got a flag on the play. And we'll have to Wait. Clipping against Delaware. Let's take a look, see if we can pick it up. No, no, I don't see anything yet. Far with the pitch back. There it is. And here is the clip, and it is thrown on Tom Patton. And it's going to go against Delaware and push the football back. But Chris Heyer unable to get the angle on Patton. Delaware had achieved the first down, but the step off from... The 39-yard line all the way back to the 24-yard line. Second down for the Hens. They'll need 16 now. They'll actually need 17. Need to get to the 41-yard line for their own 24. Barry Enzo splits into the near side. John Sparr started the season as number one quarterback. Unable to move the team against Westchester, and B.J. Webster came on, and he's been there ever since. Far under pressure, and he is going to go down at the 22-yard line. And he came from Dave Detmer, the right defensive tackle. He just tracked down Far and put him down. And Webster is going to come back in, and Far will go to the sideline. Tubby trying to find 
something that will get the end offense moving. Howard did move the football on offense in the first half. Just not able to cash in when they needed to. Here's the pass over higher. 